In this lecture, we'll talk about logarithmic functions. So let's start with a definition. The logarithmic function with base a, where a is greater than zero and a is not equal to one, is denoted y equals log subscript a, or log base a, of x, and is defined as follows. y equals log base a of x, if and only if x equals a raised to the y power. Note that this means that the logarithmic function is the inverse of the exponential function. So let's work on rewriting logarithmic and exponential functions. First, we'll put up the definition just to help us remember what we're using. y equals log base a of x, if and only if x is equal to a to the y. And let's look at some examples. First, a cubed equals 2.1. So we're given an exponential expression. We want to rewrite it as a logarithmic expression. So if we look at the definition above, a cubed equals 2.1, that means our y is 3, our x is 2.1, and our base is a, which means we can rewrite this as log base a of 2.1 equals 3. Okay, another example, log base 2 of 6 is equal to x, so our base is 2, that means that the base of the exponential will be 2. The number inside the logarithm will go to the other side of the equal sign, and the x will be our exponent, but we can rewrite this as 2 to the x equals 6. And finally, we have 3 to the x equals 4.6, which using the definition above can be rewritten log base 3 of 4.6 equals x. Next, we'll talk about evaluating logarithms by hand, so without using a calculator. If we're trying to evaluate a logarithm by hand, the goal is to rewrite it as an exponential and then try to solve. So, for example, we want to find log base 3 of 1 over 9. So using the definition of the logarithm from the previous slide, we can rewrite this as an exponential. This means 3 raised to the question mark, or 3 raised to the x equals 1 over 9. So we want to solve this and find out what represents the question mark. So remember the goal for solving exponential equations is to try to get them written with the same base. So we can rewrite 1 over 9 as 3 to the negative 2, so we have 3 raised to the unknown quantity equals 3 to the negative 2. Since our bases are the same, we can now set the exponents equal to each other. So, so our unknown quantity is equal to negative 2. This means log base 3 of 1 ninth is equal to negative 2. Next we want to talk about finding the domain of logarithmic functions. So since the logarithmic function and the exponential function are inverses, we can use that relationship to figure out our domain and range. The domain of the logarithm should be the range of the exponential, which is all numbers greater than zero, and the range of the logarithm should be the domain of the exponential, which will be all real numbers. So basically this means to find the domain of the logarithmic function, we must ensure that what's inside the logarithmic function is a positive number. So let's look at an example. Find the domain of the following function. g of x equals 8 plus 5 times the natural log of 2x plus 3. So again, to find the domain of the logarithmic function, we need to make sure that what's inside the logarithmic function is greater than 0. So to find our domain, we just need to solve what makes 2x plus 3 bigger than 0. We can subtract 3 from both sides of the equation, giving us 2x is greater than negative 3 and then divide both sides by negative 2, giving us x is greater than negative 3 halves. So our domain will be the set of all x, such that x is greater than negative 3 halves. Or in interval notation, the interval from negative 3 halves to infinity. Let's check out another example. This time we want to find the domain of the function g of x equals log base 4 of x minus 1. Take a couple minutes and see if you can figure out the domain on your own, and then continue the lecture to work along with me. So again, in order to find the domain, we need to ensure that what's inside the logarithm is positive, so x minus 1 has to be bigger than 0. We can add 1 to both sides of the equation, giving us x is greater than 1. So our domain will be the set of all x, such that x is greater than 1, or in interval notation, the interval from 1 to infinity. Let's take a couple minutes to talk about some special logarithms. First, we have the natural logarithm, which is the logarithm with a base of e, 
and it's written ln x. So y equals ln x if and only if x equals e to the y. Secondly, the logarithm with base 10 is often written simply as log. So if you just see a log in your homework, or if you just see a log, the 10 is usually understood. So log means log base 10. And so y equals log of x if and only if x equals 10 to the y. Now, log base 10 and the natural log are extremely important to us because they're the only logarithms that have keys on the calculator. Let's look at a couple of examples where we'll evaluate logarithms using a calculator. First, we want to evaluate the natural log of 5 divided by 3. If you have a Texas Instruments graphing calculator or some other calculator that will allow you to put in multiple operations at the same time, you would type this into your calculator by pressing the LN button, open parenthesis 5, close parenthesis, divided by 3. If you don't have a Texas Instruments graphing calculator or having difficulty using your calculator for logarithms, please ask your instructor for assistance. So when we evaluate that, we should get 0.536. Again, if you didn't get 0 0.536 or are having trouble using your calculator, please ask your instructor to help you out. Next, we want to evaluate log of 15 plus log of 20 divided by natural log 15 plus natural log of 20. So if we key this into our calculator, we need to make sure we're using parentheses in the proper places. So we open parentheses and then log open parentheses 20 close parentheses plus log, open parentheses, 15, close parentheses, close parentheses, so our entire numerator is in parentheses, divided by parentheses, natural log of 20, plus the natural log of 15, close parentheses. And if we evaluate that, we should get 0 0.434. Next, we'll talk briefly about graphing logarithmic functions or recognizing the graph of a logarithmic function. And again, the easiest way to do this right now is just to plot points. So for example, if we want to look at the function f of x equals the natural log of x, we'll start by picking several different values of x. We know that x has to be positive to be in the domain, so let's start with x equals 1. If x equals 1, the natural log of 1 is 0. If x equals 2, we can put the natural log of 2 in our calculator and get 0 0.6931. When x is 3, we see that the natural log of 3 is 1.0986. If x is 4, we see the natural log of 4 is 1.3863. And finally, if x is 5, we'll see the natural log of 5 is 1.6094. So, we take these values, the x values and their corresponding y values, and we'll plot them on a coordinate axis. So the points that we found look like this, and so to sketch the graph or identify the graph, we'll just draw a line through them, and so f of x equals the natural log of x has a graph that looks like this. Finally, we want to talk about solving logarithmic equations. So the first strategy that we're going to use is, if possible, use the definition to rewrite using exponents. So when y equals log base a of x, we can rewrite it as x equals a to the y. So our first example, we want to solve log base 3 of 3x minus 2 equals 2. Using the definition of the logarithm, we can rewrite this as 3x minus 2 equals 3 raised to the second power. And 3 squared is 9, so 3x minus 2 equals 9. Now we just need to solve for x. We add 2 to both sides of the equation, giving us 3x equals 11. And then divide both sides of the equation by 3, giving us x equals 11 over 3. So the solution to the equation log base 3 of 3x minus 2 equals 2 is x equals 11 thirds. You can take this number and plug it into the equation to check your answer. Let's look at another example. This time we want to solve log base 6 of 36 equals 5x plus 3. So using the definition of the logarithm, we can rewrite this as 36 equals 6 raised to the 5x plus 3 power. The strategy for solving an exponential equation right now is to rewrite it so that both sides have the same base. So we could rewrite 36 as 6 squared, giving us 6 squared equals 6 to the 5x plus 3. And now that both sides of the equation have the same base, we can set the exponents equal to each other. 
So 2 equals 5x plus 3. We subtract 3 from both sides of the equation, giving us negative 1 equals 5x, and then divide both sides by 5 to get x equals negative 1 fifth. So our solution is x equals negative 1 fifth. Let's look at another example. This time we have e to the negative 2x plus 1 equals 13. So we'll start by using the definition of the logarithm to rewrite our exponential as a logarithm. So if e to the negative 2x plus 1 equals 13, that means negative 2x plus 1 will equal log base e, or natural log, of 13. To solve for x, we'll subtract 1 from both sides of the equation, giving us negative 2x equals the natural log of 13 minus 1, and then we'll divide both sides by negative 2 to give us x equals the natural log of 13 minus 1 divided by negative 2. So we could leave this as our exact answer, or if they ask for an approximation to a certain number of decimal points, we plug it into our calculator. So using our calculator, we get x equals negative 0.782. Here's one final example. 8 times 10 to the 2x minus 7 equals 3. In order to solve this, we want to get our exponential function by itself first. So let's divide both sides by 8. That gives us 10 to the 2x minus 7 equals 3 over 8. Now we can use the definition of the logarithm, or the relationship between the logarithm and the exponential, to rewrite our equation giving us 2x minus 7 equals the log of 3 eighths. To solve for x, we'll add 7 to both sides of the equation, giving us 2x equals the log of 3 eighths plus 7. Then we divide both sides of the equation by 2, giving us x equals the log of 3 eighths plus 7 divided by 2. We can evaluate this using our calculator, which gives us an answer of 3.287.